Hey, welcome back to my channel. My name's Tammy. I'm the owner of Walnut Creek Bath Boutique, and today I am making one of my all-time best-selling soaps. It's Sea Salt and Orchid. I get this uh, fragrance from Candle Science. I love this fragrance. Um, probably top five best-selling soaps. I usually have to make it two or three times a year, and it's probably in the top two of my uh, creams, this scent. I've made wax melts with it and it'll sell, but not super fast. It's kind of like low to medium in the sales of wax melts, go figure, but soaps, liquid soaps, creams, buddy, I can't hardly keep it in stock. Uh, every woman loves it. It's one of those just universally loved fragrances that they, they smell that soap and they just are drawn to it. And I understand it because I am too. So how I am doing my oils here, I, I haven't ever showed you guys how I kind of melt my oils down, so I thought I would share that with you, um, and I'll show you my colorants um, and get those all ready. So yeah, I'm just going to get ready. My lye water is still a little hot, but I think I'm going to get everything else ready, and hopefully by the time that's good, we can get to moving. So I'm going to go ahead and get my gloves back on and get everything ready. And then we're just going to, I'll show you a little bit more of my process. I thought, you know, why not, right? <laughs> why not? <laughs> oh my gosh. Guys, I ordered my tripod today. <laughs> I have been complaining about my tripod for months. I have, I ordered it. Uh, it dropped $20 in price. I jumped on it jumped on it. I was so excited so yeah it's it's coming I'm excited um, this thing is pretty janky okay so how I do my oils this doesn't fit in my microwave and this is the jug I need for my soap batching because or my soap making because um, it's it's big enough right it's the only one I have that's big enough for at my 27 bar soap mold. This fits in my microwave. So I heat up these oils and or butters, I should say. I heat up my butters that are solid and I put my liquid oils in here. Once this is all melted and about it's 124 now, I'm going to go ahead and put it in here. And so getting that 124 is about where it needs to be to melt all of the uh, butters. I um, melted my sustainable palm oil and my coconut oil and then um, when that was about melted I added the shea butter and I'm doing I'm using shea butter today instead of cocoa butter just for something different. I don't know if I've ever used just shea butter. Now I've made I've used shea in soap, but it's usually with cocoa butter, like a three butter soap. I've made that before, um, so I thought I would just try something a little different. Uh, there we go. So once that hits about 124, you add it to my cold oils here, and now that's at 94. So that's like darn near perfect. Um, this is still a little warm though, so I'm going to take a few minutes and get my colorants ready. So today, because sea salt and orchid will discolor, I am gonna add titanium dioxide to my base here um, and uh, get that stirred in really well with the stick blender before I add my fragrance oil. But I'm gonna go ahead and pull off enough for the colors. So I'm gonna use Radiant Plum. I'm using, from Brambleberry, I'm using very rich deep colors like this isn't like what I would consider a dark color but it's a very deep and it's a colorant um, so that's gonna I'm gonna make sure I get that really mixed in well I'm also using raspberry red mica from nurture soap again a deep deep pink and this is a new to me colorant color I've never used a Fantasia from nurture soap but it looks like a really deep purple so I'm going to um, try this and I, I need to make my label for it because I like my labels to all look the same <laughs> yeah I know I know I can't help it I think it looks pretty on my shelf when all my labels look like the same <laughs> so I still have the old label but I have that one facing out all right I'm gonna get my colorants in my small little pictures 
All right. This is a goat milk soap. I get my goat's milk from a guy in a one town south of here, Cloverdale. Um, so that's where I get my goat's milk and I just freeze it until I'm ready to use it. And one of the things that I have trouble with is I always put too much too much batter in my uh, soaps off that I color off to the side like this. I always add too much, and then I don't have enough of the base. It's kind of overdone or something. So I'm going to try really hard not to put too much batter in these. I'm just going to add just enough. to get these mixed in. So I didn't do as steep of water discount as I normally do. I usually do a two to one water, honestly. So two parts water to one part lye. Um, that's just how, how I've done it for a couple years now. Um, Certainly not when I was first making soap, I didn't do that, but last couple years I have. Uh, but this, this soap will discolor, but my recipe, I'm sorry, this soap will, will ex or, I, goodness, this fragrance <laughs> will accelerate your trace, but I think my soap recipe also accelerates trace. So I changed up the soap recipe a little bit today, <laughs> so... It could be a very slow moving fragrance and it was just my soap causing issues. Very possible. My soap recipe, I should say. That's, you know, but the only problem with adding the little extra water is the uh, glycerin rivers that you will get and soda ash. And man, there was a time where I was getting glycerin rivers like crazy, but I stopped I stopped doing the, uh, I started water discounting and my glycerin rivers really did stop. Um, you can tell this is a color. It's got, I'm going to have to take a few seconds here and really smush. Okay, I think that's it. I think for the most part, that is good. Okay. I'm going to add some kale and clay to this really quickly. I'm going to get this mixed in. And while I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and put some titanium dioxide in here. And I think I'll go ahead and put my goat milk in here so I don't forget it. Done that. I have done that, and that's part of your water. So it's pretty bad if you forget that. I'm going to go ahead. This is about 95. This is about 104. So I'm just going to go for it. I'm going to go measure off my my uh, fragrance. Okay, I thought I was going to need my second bottle, but I had enough in the first bottle, so that's good. And thank you to Lisa over at I Dream and Soap because how genius was that idea of cutting your lye containers 
and using those as little pots. Love it. And I use those quite often for different things, so it's really handy. Okay. All right, not too much. We'll see, we'll see how I, how I do here. It's already feeling a little thick, nothing crazy. It's just my, you can see this dick blender I have, um, I don't know if you can see that, but it's actually not falling in on itself. It's streaking off, if that makes sense. Oh, I need more than that. It's already getting thick. So, what am I going to do? Maybe just a drop swirl and, and um, a spoon swirl. Because I don't think I'm going to have enough time to do much else. A little bit more in there. These are quite a bit looser than the base. Mm, these are pretty. I'm almost sad how, how it's going to discolor. These are really pretty. Okay. I need, I need to get this in here. It's really starting to thicken up on me. Um, let's see. I'm going to use a stir rod. I don't think I've ever done this either. I've always used just a spoon. Um, all right, just be done with that. <laughs> it's hard to stop. You know, it's been a while since I've used gold glitter on a soap. <laughs> All right, guys, there it is. Not, I'm not in love with the top. Um, and man, it got thick on me, didn't it? Uh, so, but it's fine. It's fine. Not a problem. I am going to put this in the oven. So I'm going to turn my oven on to 170. Um, when it hits 170, turn it off, put this in here and let it sit overnight. And then I'll probably cut it in a couple days. I'll probably just leave it, leave it alone for a couple days, let it do its thing. Um, and then, yeah, we'll bring you back when it's time to cut it into bars. But yeah, I'm not in love at the top, but it's not, I mean, I've done worse. <laughs> I have done worse. <laughs> I'll see you soon. Huh. Well, that's different. I need to go look at the video and see how I um, did this. I don't remember. And it's funny, you know, when, when I first started 
making soap and I would watch a YouTuber say, and they would say, oh, I don't remember exactly what I did. And I'm thinking, how do you forget? I mean, seriously, how do you forget how you designed a soap or what you did? And it's true. I don't remember. <laughs> did I do a hanger swirl? Did I do an in the pot swirl? I don't remember. So yeah, all those, all those times I, I didn't quite trust somebody saying that. I got a little um, air pocket right there. So this is the center bar. Sometimes it has more uh, swirls in it. And it does. Ooh, that one's pretty. Do you have enough light? Hopefully you have enough light. That one's pretty. I like that too. Ooh, I like that. Just cleaning up the edges. It definitely discolors, as you can see. Um, I think I added a little titanium dioxide to this just to kind of help a little bit. This is actually lighter than the last time I made it. Um, whether it discolors a little bit more still, uh, I think it will, but not much. Um, it's gonna turn into like a toffee color. Like if you can see um, this as opposed to this. So it's going to turn that color. Um, so it's going to, it is definitely going to get a little bit darker and the, the purples and the pinks that I used will also become more muted. But it's such a good fragrance that you just, you know, you just kind of design around that because <laughs> it's so worth it. Love the scent. It's still a little soft. Um, I used to try to wait a day or even a couple days before cleaning up the edges because they will clean up so much nicer and easier if you don't do it right away. Uh, but then, you know, then you have to kind of find a spot for them and then re take them out of that spot. And it's just, it's just so much easier to do it right away, but they do, it does kind of stick to the, the, these little shreds kind of stick a little bit too much. Um, so you have to fight that a little bit and it's well established that I am not patient. <laughs> Uh, not, not at all patient. So I use a tall and skinny mold. Um, I don't know that we've ever discussed my mold size. Uh, I like the tall and skinny. Um, I have considered making them even skinnier, like a, I think it's, I think it would be considered like an extra tall and skinny. Um, but and I used to actually, I used to have about a quarter of an inch um, that I would cut off. Where am I? Top. So I get three bars um, when I when I cut this, right? And I would have like three bars plus like a quarter of an inch. And each of these bars was like what? A quarter of an inch divided by three skinnier. Um, and then I would cut that and use that as samples. And if I ever got super busy to where I needed a lot of samples, I would maybe go back to that. But in the meantime, I don't have enough sales to warrant that many samples. Um, 
So it just felt very wasteful to have all of that. And, um, and it's really unnecessary for me at this point because I just don't have that many. Um, I give samples to online orders for sure. Every order gets, gets a sample. Um, and I don't give samples to every in-person sale and I don't give samples to every sale like at craft shows, but I will, <laughs> I will give samples, um, at craft shows, but I was just, I just had too many. So I, I kind of went back to just three bars and no excess and I get, um, three to six samples out of each batch depending on um, like whether I I cut this in half or not and if I cut this in half it would be a really skinny sample uh, but normally I can get maybe two of two of these but not not this thick uh, thicker than half of this if that makes sense um, but my my guide is a little bit off and I just don't want to I haven't messed with changing it Last one. And I have got to do something with this shred. I'm definitely going to be doing something um, late summer. Who guys, they are done. I love this scent. Let me find a pretty one. That one's pretty. I love this scent. I think it's a beautiful bar, even though it will discolor more. Oh, this scent. Oh, can I just say it's so nice. Uh, but yeah, sea salt and orchid. And I, I it's, it's one of my all time favorite scents for soap or creams. <laughs> and I just absolutely love it. So thanks so much for watching. I appreciate your time and I will see you in the next video. Bye. <laughs>